I'm Karen Hoyt, Marketing Director at Shasta Regional Medical Center, and we're proud to be part of the conversation that the forum at KIXE is bringing to our community. Shasta Regional has been around for more than 60 years supporting our community, and we would like to invite you to be a part of the forum on KIXE. Together, we can support the community that gives us back so much. Thank you. Hi, and thank you for watching The Forum. I'm your host, Ashley Tate, here with our co-host, Christy Largent, and we're also here with Arts for All. Penny Baxter is the founder, and we're here with Kim Kernitsky, the president. So tell us a little bit about what you've got going on here with Arts for All. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for having us. Of course, mm -hmm. thank you for coming on. We're you glad are, you're here. Yeah. So Penny, you're the founder, and what is Arts for All? Arts for All is a community uh, booster group for the arts. Um, so much in the same way that, that sports has their boosters yeah. and helps support what happens after school, Arts for All is a parent and community um, booster group that, that supports both the visual and the performing arts. Oh, wow. And so we help support um, dance, uh, uh, drama, theater, uh, choirs, bands, uh, visual, and all visual arts programs throughout the district. What made you come up with this uh, group to come up with Arts for All? How did you decide, I want to do this? About uh, six years ago, maybe seven, um, Chico Unified was, was set to get a great deal of uh, funding, as was all school districts, mm -hmm. um, to help support the arts because the arts had been suffering for a long time. And um, so it was kind of some, some makeup money um, for all the drastic cuts in the previous years. This and so a, we were... I'm sorry to interrupt. This is a large block grant that was issued through the state of California oh, wow. that had mm -hmm. been... Uh, I was just thinking that a lot of schools had been going through something like that where they, their arts were getting less funding. Right. Yeah. So yeah. this is something that was so coming through. Right. So about six, seven years ago, years. it was a block grant okay. that um, every district was, was going to receive, and, and our district was scheduled to receive $3 million. Wow. And we were all really excited, and everybody's making their wish lists and yeah. trying to, you know, oh, well, we can get this fixed and get a new tuba, and yeah. we can do this. and <laughs> We can all spend money <laughs> right. before we, we get can, it, right? We can. <laughs> we can. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, to be able to replenish what you've kind of made do with yes. or, you know, the, the equipment that's being held together with duct tape and wire. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then our district hit some financial troubles and that money ended up getting swept into oh. the general fund mm -hmm. um, and it was not, um, and so then we, we didn't get it. And so there was a great deal of parents and teachers and children we showed up at the board meeting to, to protest this, but yeah. it was too late. And I realized that's what often happens, is that we show up at the board meetings too late, yeah. that the decision's already been made. And so we, we need a network of support that reminds our community that the arts are, are vital in yeah, our community. Absolutely. Most, uh, many times I tell people I'm an art teacher and they say, oh, you still have that? Yeah. And <laughs> they're surprised that, right. that we still have a band and a choir, let alone then when they find out how successful we are. And um, then you want to support it and you want to keep it alive. And so what I realized is that a lot of people in our community didn't realize what, um, what a good visual and performing arts program that we have in Chico Unified, but also we, we, don't, we don't have the support network to, um, to be in place so that um, these decisions are being, um, so people aren't stepping up um, too late, that we, we need people to, who are active before it ends up at a board meeting. Right. So what are some of the projects that you guys have been able to do? In the, and, and where did you get your money? I mean, the, you didn't get it from the school. <laughs> yeah. no. So where no. did you get your money and how did that come about? And, and Kim, how did you connect up with Penny? Well, uh, <laughs> actually, I came in, a, sort of back up a little bit a few a few years but actually my entering in was um, a result of kind of things falling into place at the right time mm -hmm. um, my daughter was uh, in choir at Chico High School 
in 2009 she graduated and her teacher was fantastic um, we uh, and I was part of a, um, a field trip they had at the end of the year they had a wonderful program um, and it they took us to San Francisco the the children performed at a at a um, music festival um, they were went to see uh, Wicked in so at, mm -hmm. at that time, theater. basically, you're saying and that they were very exposed. Well, yes, right? the, but this was largely as a result of the teacher and right. work with the, 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 the parents and whatnot. Well, um, during the summer that year, uh, the, this particular teacher got the pink slip, basically meaning yeah. that she's out. And I learned that her uh, program uh, was going to be replaced. The, the teacher at the junior higher was going to teach both the high school choir program plus the junior high program. Oh. So basically they're wow. making one teacher mm -hmm. teach both programs right. at two and different they were schools. Right, going to be stressed and too taxed. And so the, to those kinds of advantages would no longer exist. Right. Fortunately this teacher went on to teach at the new charter high school in Spire. Uh, School of the Arts and Sciences in, in Chico and continued to teach and we're really fortunate so to have So you were her. involved because of your, your daughter, but then how yes. did you connect with Penny? During that summer, there was an email came out mm -hmm. that said, well, there's a group starting and the, this teacher said, well, you know, I have the pink slip, but maybe we can do something to salvage the arts. So I showed up at a meeting. You showed up at a meeting. It <laughs> wasn't a very positive <laughs> meeting, I have to tell you. Um, there not. was a lot of unhappiness there. Yes. Morale was very low. Very, very low. low. Well, you can um, imagine, you think you're getting some funding, and then you find out the funding's been spent mm -hmm. elsewhere when it was specifically earmarked for arts. Mm -hmm. I think you would have a lot of people in the same boat had that happened anywhere. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So, I mean, so when you were talking about everything that had happened, enter Penny, right? <laughs> Kim. Not Penny Kim, because she was there when uh -huh. you all were at this meeting, and how did you present your idea and get support? Um, at the, we had had smaller meetings beforehand, and this was a, a larger meeting, and I, I was talking to the parents that were there about how we, we needed to make sure that the arts were visible in right. our community, and um, and that if, if our community really knew what we were doing, mm -hmm. that they would support us mm -hmm. and that we needed to put ourselves out there and we needed to make sure that, that Chico knew that we had a very vital um, arts program. Right. And so in order to do that, we, we have to um, really... Band together yes, and, and get it and off the and ground. Art people especially are right. not very good at putting ourselves out there and and so um, so we came together to uh, to try to to do that right. and so I was looking for parent leadership and Kim stepped up yeah. well and, um, I, I, I just important I felt the energy in the room yeah. and it wasn't really happy and I kind of like to have happy energy right, in a room yeah. right. <laughs> and so I felt well I could I could do something to mm -hmm. contribute to that and I felt that if teachers are unhappy, what's happening with the children exactly. in the classrooms? Mm -hmm. So it was a mixture of teachers, parents, interested community members that mm -hmm. banded together, mm -hmm. created your organization, Arts for All, mm -hmm. and your nonprofit. Is that That's right. and right. who? How does the money get funneled through, and how do you raise money? Well, our organization is a fund of the North Valley Community Foundation, which uh, is is through Chico, but serves the whole North right. North Valley. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we are a nonprofit through the organization, um, and we can raise awareness and raise funds for the schools. And what we do is we established a both a membership program and a grant funding program. Um, so we raise money through the membership, yeah. and we also put on a gala each year. Oh wow! To Tell raise us a money about that. Mm -hmm. I love oh. galas. <laughs> <laughs> well, February twelfth. <12th. laughs> that sounds <laughs> like very good. Right around That's, Valentine's yeah. Day, as a matter yeah. of fact. Um, bring your Valentine. This is. Um, it's it's a, it's a showcase of the arts in the schools, and ah. so children from, all the schools that we can entice into the into the. Uh, uh, Center for the Arts right, yeah. at um, Pleasant Valley High School. Um, uh, the teachers come and showcase their students in productions of theater, dance, mm -hmm. music, band, choir. Wow. So one question I have for you is, what would you, what would you recommend to someone here 
Mm -hmm. We have a lot of different schools that, that do arts. I mean, Reading School of the Arts is specifically for that type of mm -hmm. stuff, performing arts mm -hmm. and things. But what would you recommend to someone who has a school that doesn't quite have an arts program yet? How could they get that up and running? I, I would think you, you first have to get some interested parents mm -hmm. um, involved. Um, does that start with calling a meeting first at the school, or does that start with talking to the principal? How would you? I think you'd want you to gain as much support as you can early on, and you'd have to have the support of your principal. You'd have to have support of your your um, school board, mm -hmm. and um, and some uh, interested colleagues, and then um, and then try to build a, a, a grassroots um, movement um, like what what we've done. To, uh, to, to make sure that there's support for it. And, um, and then once you can get some support for it, you can um, generally um, try to start introducing some programs right. um, and take small steps. We now have brought back um, music into um, a few of our elementary schools oh, where it had been yeah. cut from before. Yeah. And, um, and there was these teachers, the teachers who are teaching the music, do they volunteer? No. Okay, so they do actually get paid. Yes. Oh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, in some cases, uh, music teachers have worked um, after school so that mm -hmm. children in the junior highs um, could attend, and um, so they pull together uh, various um, uh, ways of doing it to make right. it happen. But if parents mm -hmm. are there and parents want it, right, the, the school board is meant to serve the parents. Yeah. So, and what our children. is what is your website? Do you guys have a website? Arts um, for we all. have a Facebook page. Okay, um, Arts for All. It's Facebook.com um, slash Arts for All. Yes, okay. Arts for All uh, C U S D. Arts yes. for yes. All C U S D. If you're interested in that yeah. and mm -hmm. supporting, and I bet you're always looking for people to come be involved and donate yes. and mm -hmm. participate and help. Yes. And February 12th is your big gala. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for something to do, February 12th <laughs> in Chico mm -hmm. at what school? It's at the Pleasant Valley High School. And There's a Center for the Arts, which is the Chico Unified School District. And where do they get tickets for this? Um, at the door. At the door. Um, oh, is okay. the best place. Um, is it casual sure. or is it pretty casual? Uh, yeah. Okay, yes. so you can just show we up. Have, um, <laughs> you, we have okay. a gallery. Um, That's a Thursday night, right? Uh, Wednesday, 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 Wednesday night. Wednesday, 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 Wednesday February. Good job mm -hmm. on the okay. days. Well, <laughs> we've been planning it for all <laughs> 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 yeah, That's true. We have that yeah. down. But um, it's a, um, there'll be a, the gallery opens at 6.30 okay. and the performances start at 7. Thank you so much, Penny and Kim, for coming on. We yeah. enjoy having you. Thanks for supporting the arts. Well, and we'll be you. right back with our next segment. Hi, we're back with uh, Joyce Morrow, and she is a docent for the Barron's Eaton Museum, and um, she's going to explain to us a little bit about what a docent is with her sense of humor. I'd like to hear how you're going to explain that. Uh, it's just basically free help. <laughs> yeah. Free help. Also known as a volunteer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so Joyce is really here with us today to talk about the Barron's Aiton Museum and what is going on. Those of you who are familiar with it over on West Street here in Reading know that you've seen a huge transformation over the last few years. So we're here to get the first-hand scoop from Joyce, who apparently goes way back way with back. the museum yep. and mm -hmm. with the judge. Yep. So why don't you tell us about that? As a friend. Yeah, yeah. as a friend. <laughs> well, I, I am very proud to be one of several very dedicated docents for the Barron's Eaton Museum. Uh, it's been a long time coming. The public probably is aware the judge died in 2003, mm -hmm. and his, uh, he left a trust of a considerable amount of money. It and um, it, the, it said that there would be three governors appointed to run the museum, and I'll go over it quickly. One of them was from Shasta College, that's Scott Carter, okay. and one of them was from the Historical Society, which is Jerry Coughlin, and, and then my husband, David Morrow. Uh, David represents the legal community. Okay. And they serve for life. And, um, and this is who they, uh, Judge they, Eaton chose? This no, guy. no, the entities, the entities okay. specified. And, and, and that, that's how it, it came to be. Oh, wow. So he just okay. specified the entities in yes. his will. Yes. Now, did you guys know this was how he was leaving it? No. Even though my husband was his attorney, he did not 
require much. He just asked that we never let him be taken out of his home. So oh. no one, I, no one knew really anything about the trust. In fact, when he died, they assumed he would want a, a funeral, of, and and they were going to cremate him, and mm -hmm. he was going to be down at the Episcopal Church in about ten minutes. Here I go. I was not going to say bad. Well, okay, okay, go ahead. Keep going. Don't say anything bad. Keep it's going. Let's stop you. Let's we'll stop you. It's, it's kind that. of funny. About ten minutes before he was to be cremated, they found the will, and he wanted a big military funeral. And oh. my husband went racing down to the funeral parlor and made it just in time. Oh, and we that's had a great a, friend. Had a military service. It was for him. Wow. Yes. And so. Uh, <laughs> Time, time went on, and uh, we discovered the house was in pretty much a state of disrepair. Mm -hmm. His mother died in uh, 56, and his aunt died in 76, I think. And so he lived there a long time by himself. And, and he, as you all know, he was, yes. he was frugal, or you could even go so far to say cheap. Uh, and so and she he, means that in with the no way female, possible. with no female <laughs> influence to no, keep the house up. No. So right, uh, yeah. So it's yeah. it's been a long time, and we've yeah. had to meet many codes, and it's. But we now think that we are just about. We've got, I think, one more permit to get finished up, and we are hoping that towards the end of February we will have the private viewing for our donors oh. and sponsors, and then uh, there's a chamber thing, and then we'll be open to the public, and it's. I think they're going to be very pleased. So it's just it's amazing. Like the end of February, you're thinking yes, this will we be are, yeah, we happening. are hoping so. And yes. have you completely refurbished everything? Just or? the downstairs, oh, okay. and it is it is truly. We've been we're hanging the paintings, and he has some oh. wonderful artwork. And well, uh, people have to realize that his great grandparents came in 1852. His great grandfather was a sailor, and he was uh, from Germany, and he was going around by Hawaii, heard about the gold rush, got to San Francisco like so many other right. people, jump ship, yeah. came to Whiskey Town, and then his wife came, oh, uh, and they, they lived in Whiskey Town, and then uh, his son Charles uh, Barons became the uh, sheriff of Shasta County. They, uh, he ran the Empire Hotel out at Old Shasta, oh. and, and <laughs> was also the Wells Fargo agent. We've got a wonderful picture of him on a horse in a write-up where he'd gone to Aden. He took a deputy, and they went to Aden on a train to chase down some desperados, and they oh. got in a big gunfight, and one of the crooks was killed, and one of the, the deputy was killed, and Sheriff Barron's had seven bullet holes in his clothes, a lot of them in the tail of his jacket because he ran out of bullets and had to hey, that's run the best away. Place to have <laughs> You're gonna have bullet holes in your clothes. So what year was that? Uh, it would be uh, well. He became sheriff in 1898, and so it was during that period. And incidentally, we have actual newspapers from that that time. Oh. I just unearthed some more. It'd be more like a great piece of history oh. for Shasta County. I mean, that's yeah. People do not, well, I'll finish the, the lineage of that sure. very quickly. So Charles Barron's married, and he, and he married another lady that had come from Germany. They had three children, Edna Eaton, who was a wonderful historian, that's Eaton's mother, and then Aunt Ella, who was a, remained an old maid, and then Earl. Earl went on to become the major political correspondent for the San Francisco Examiner. Oh. for 55 years, oh. won the Medal of Freedom from Nixon. Wow. And so we have a wealth of things that he sent home, yeah. and, and so we have all of that. And then, so when they moved to Reading, when he was sheriff, and they bought that house on West Street in, in 1898. Oh. And so at that time, it was the three children, and Mary and Charles Barons, and Mary's mother, Susanna, and they never threw anything away from that day forward. Oh. We have all of the women's clothes, their baby clothes, the silver, the crystal. It is, oh, and my then goodness. there's- That's incredible. It I, is. That really is. People do not understand what a wealth, and we have been, spent the last, what, 10 years going through boxes and separating all the papers, and then we've made them into, we've got notebooks on all the, uh, figures of, of history, of, of Reading, and that you can, and then, Edna kept a scrapbook of Eaton, and so we've got a scrapbook Aww. of every year he was a judge. I know a lot of stuff about people in Reading. That's person. right. <laughs> <laughs> and you get a sneak peek of the museum. I mean, this is, yeah. this oh, is it's, pretty cool it's, that you it's, get to go and see this and hear everything from you. I mean, clothing from oh, 1898. Yes. Right. I, mean, I think this is so interesting because oh. sometimes, like I, I heard during the time of all this going on is, why on earth are we saving that place? It's yes. a dump. Oh, Just tear yeah. it down. 
but what you've shown is that it's just this huge wealth of historical knowledge for yes. our community, and we don't have a lot of that here. No, let's we face don't, it. We don't. We're hoping. So, we're hoping that people will just come in and spend the afternoon browsing yeah, through yeah. notebooks and things. Yeah. People are also interested in one tidbit that that happened when the house was being emptied. Right. Uh, they went into. Uh, mama's bedroom downstairs and there was a safe and they finally jiggled it open and wads of money fell out oh. wrapped with a paper by years oh. and they started counting and it was too hard to count so they took it to the bank and there was ninety eight thousand dollars in the safe in cash yes <laughs> And they assume <laughs> oh that stars. was from the many weddings. And we have a book of all the weddings he married and how much people paid. So if anybody wants to know what their friends paid to get married, they don't know enough. Because <laughs> he kept it and wrapped <laughs> it in the newspaper and put it in the safe. Well, and then he, he had to kept a, he kept a book of, of all everybody oh, yeah. he married. Oh, my and, stars. Uh, uh, every once in a while I run into people say, well, he married me, but I got a divorce. I said, well, you can come in and scratch out your name. <laughs> <laughs> so when will the museum be open? When should uh, it be open? How often will you be open? You know, uh, that's going to be a, a difficult thing. Uh, like everything else, it depends upon available docents. I th we're, we're thinking tentatively that we will only have, we're going to leave the display museums closed for a while because we think people will be mostly interested in the house. Right. And then we hope in, to continue probably Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then maybe some Saturdays. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'm the only one silly enough to go down on Saturdays, so we're going to have to find somebody You else. need new docents then? People well, who want to help with the project? Yeah. I yes. only want to come down on Saturdays when you're there. Okay. So I can get a little laugh too, <laughs> a little laugh at my history. Well, <laughs> the other docents don't laugh at me all the time because, <laughs> no. Because you're telling them what to do. I irritate them a lot. <laughs> I can't but imagine they, why. They are, <laughs> they are extremely dedicated, oh, yeah. talented women. And well, so exciting. what's the combination? How are you guys related with Turtle Bay yeah. and with the Historical Society? You know, that's, I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, people assumed that he would leave his money probably to the Historical Society because they were very, both he and his mother, his mother was one of the founding members. Oh. But he, he wrote this trust, and I, I think it was, I, I can't remember if it was the 40s or the 60s, but the trust was quite old. And, it, and he, we think he um, fashioned it under the Grota Fund. He was a great fan, and uh, you know, he handled all the Grota Fund scholarships. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so he, the, it, it specifies in the will, which is part of the reason it's taken us so long, that we, and, and it's, it's held by Wells Fargo. And Joyce, we really fast. Yes. I'm just going to yeah. interrupt you for two yeah. seconds, just because I want to ask you, what is the Grota Fund? Just for anyone who oh, doesn't. Oh, uh, Grota Fund was. He was another early person. He came in town. He was a dentist, and he made a lot of money mining. And that's the scholarship that still has given uh, many, oh, okay. many kids, uh, Shasta County kids, get. Oh, wow. It's still in, in existence and today. And who can get that fund? It's it's from the high school. Oh, like okay. my oh, granddaughter so got one. It's oh, wow. very a very common. Um, so he was involved with that. We thought he was going to go to historical society, but what happened? Well, he, he wrote this, the trust, and, and uh, he wrote it at the Bank of America, but it was sold to Wells Fargo, and that's how come we, we had such a time. Oh. We didn't know where it was when he, when he died. Oh. But this, the trust specifies that we can only spend the income from the interest. Right. And so when the stock market went down, like everyone else, we took a real hit and it right, slowed right. us down. Right. We still have to build the gazebo. We have to, the upstairs is not done, mm -hmm. but uh, we hope that all that will, you know, Eventually happen in time. Mm -hmm. Well, and don't you think once you get open and people see what a treasure it is? We hope so. So, although you're separate from these other entities, you're a nonprofit and people can participate by donating money. Am I correct? Or you can or time. Buy, buy a brick and um, mm -hmm. yes, we've had many, really a lot of wonderful people have been supporting us and helping us and, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's been a real, real pleasure. And well, you can become a member too, is that correct? Well, you know, it's hard to start a museum yeah. and so I we've know. been what? thinking about that, that we already, we already have life members. Oh, okay. And we'll have we have charter members, but we're, when we open, we will start our membership. Mm -hmm. And we tentatively think, you know, we have to offer something to a member besides our newsletters. We hope to have maybe an event in the yard. Right. Uh, you know, it sure. will evolve as right. as we figure our our way out. I'm just well, glad you've started it. It's, yes, I mean it's it's been a lot of work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you think well, about what you've done. Mostly, pretty extraordinary. Well, mostly 
uh, you get a little obsessed by, by it because when, it's, it's like anything else Any when something's projects? important to you. Mm -hmm. And I, I should mention that my co uh, docent that started was Alicia Coughlin, who is Jerry Coughlin's wife. Okay. And we started out just, we didn't mean to build these display museums. Our job was just to inventory, but it yeah. just sort of like topsy, and yeah. they are fun. Yeah. Good. Yes, well, sure. thank you so it's much fun. for coming on. You've yeah. been well, a real thank delight. You for having me. We have had a great time here at the forum. Thanks for watching. We can't wait until we see you at our next show. I'm Karen Hoyt, Marketing Director at Shasta Regional Medical Center, and we're proud to be part of the conversation that the forum at KIXE is bringing to our community. Shasta Regional has been around for more than 60 years supporting our community, and we would like to invite you to be a part of the forum on KIXE. Together, we can support the community that gives us back so much. Thank you.